Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. This is 9th of August and a really quick update this week. As always, I have the chapters so you can jump to the particular update you may care about the most. New videos this week, so I only got one video out because I had a second one planned and I've pushed it a week because there's a big change coming. So I wanted to be able to cover the big change that is coming. So video I did do was on the new um, extension for BICEP that lets me now declaratively manage intra objects. That's a subset of the objects, typically the ones that I would care about as I created Azure resources, like service principles, group memberships, um, some federated identities, things like that. So I go into the detail in that video. On to what's new, so on the storage side, so Azure NetApp files, when I create a volume, I can now pick the availability zone I want to create that volume in, providing the region supports availability zones. Now that's gonna be important if I'm doing sort of silos maybe of zonal deployments. So I have certain compute resources that are zonally aligned. Well now the ANF volume it uses can also be aligned to that same availability zone. So there's not some cross zone dependency. So that's gonna be useful for my high availability, my resiliency designs. Now I can also populate the AZ information for existing volumes, but I can't move them. Additionally, so for the Azure NetApp files volumes, I can also now set up cross zone replication in GA. So this is an asynchronous replication from a volume in one zone to another. It's using the same snap mirror technology that it uses for the cross region replication. So it only sends these compressed uh, modified blocks. Once again, that would help me architect for zonal failures within my region. And I can set that replication interval to be every 10 minutes, uh, hourly or daily. And the recovery point objective, i.e. in an unplanned failure, how much data I may lose, is expected to be roughly less than double of what that replication interval is. So if I set it to every 10 minutes, my recovery point objective may be 20 minutes. Remember, it's an asynchronous replication and I don't have to pay any network transfer costs for that. And then a whole bunch of miscellaneous updates. So there's a new GPT-4.0 Omni model in preview. This is the 2024-08-06. What's nice about this one is, well, it supports complex outputs like JSON that will exactly match some schema that is provided by the developer. This could be as part of a function calling or as part of the response format parameter. So I can now get these strictly adhered to structured outputs. And it supports 16,384 tokens for the output. So it's four times the number of the previous model. And it's available in the early access playground in the Azure OpenAI service. So I can start playing with that. Also around AI, so now we have the Azure OpenAI Batch API has gone GA. Now what this enables me to do is process asynchronously groups of requests. Now it's gonna operate on a separate quota than my normal model usage, but it's got a 24 hour target turnaround. But it's 50% less cost than the regular global standard. So if I have non-time sensitive AI interactions required, well, this would be a really good way to optimize my cost. So this would not be useful if I'm doing an interactive chat application and someone types saying I want an answer, latency matters there. But if I have a large scale amount of content generation like articles, large scale document reviews, large scale document summaries, large scale data processing, large scale data extraction, et cetera, that isn't time critical, then I can submit these jobs to the Azure OpenAI Batch API, and within 24 hours, I'll get those responses powered by the generative AI technology, but it's gonna cost me half the amount of money. So that's really good for those scenarios. Azure API Center, its VS Code extension now has a pre-release version. Now remember, Azure API Center provides a design time, API governance and central repository for my organization's APIs. This is very different from API management that is a runtime API that I can use to abstract and expose API securely at scale, monitor them, apply governance, etc. So what this extension will let me do now for developers, I can discover, I can try out APIs, 
but now I can get access to newer features if I use this pre-release version. So for example, today, I can create open AI specification files from my API code with GitHub Copilot. I can generate markdown documentation for any API that is in API Center. Manage Prometheus now has CRD-based configs. So CRD is a custom resource definition. So the Azure Monitor Manage Prometheus service provides a special type of workspace that gives me compatibility with Prometheus for ingestion, for the use of PromQL to query. And so this CRD pays config is how I can configure the scrape jobs that collect metrics for the pods and the service monitors in my AKS cluster. So for example, imagine I have a GPU enabled AKS cluster, I could use this to grab the extra performance, uh, the extra health metrics from the NVIDIA GPUs that are leveraged in there and then use them. For example, the managed Grafana could visualize those things. So what this does is it lets me avoid having to update the config map in the cube system namespace. And it's a very similar method to the OSS Prometheus operator for those scrape job configurations. Los Angeles, Azure Extended Zone is in preview. Now the Azure Extended Zones are not full Azure regions. They are very small footprint extensions placed in specific metros or industries. But what it would do is if I'm in that metro, it would give me a very, very low latency connection to those services. And maybe there's a really strict data res residency requirement where I can't use the regular Azure regions. Now, these are small footprint. They have some base services. They support virtual machines, they support containers, storage, some networking like Express Route. There are a selected set of Azure service around some resiliency and backup features. But I would only use these if I really had this super, super low latency requirement or this super, super strict uh, data residency. But now, hey, Los Angeles has that available. And Windows 365 GPU enabled cloud PCs have gone GA. So there's three versions of this, standard, super, and max. They are for the enterprise and frontline additions. And so if I have some graphics intensive workload or maybe even some AI enabled application that can use a GPU, I can now use these SKUs. So I think it's eight, 12, and 16 gigabytes of video RAM from the standard super max and other things like memory and number of virtual CPU scale as well with those. And so the more GPU power I need, the more I would move up and it is a separate SKU. And uh, yeah, those are now available so you can go and leverage them. And that was it. Uh, as always, I hope that was useful. And when I said I was done with the 80s themes, I lied. Take care.